Today, I will be reviewing the LX Maker LX Laser A3 Pro Laser Engraving Machine. Now, before I get started, you've probably noticed already the text in the lower left-hand corner of this video. Includes paid promotion. You're probably wondering, oh, who did he sell out to this time? The way I got paid, quote-unquote, to do this was Banggood contacted me. I said I could review this. They sent it over for me to keep in exchange for making this video. The new rules say that you need to disclose if you've been paid to make a review. Now, even though I was not monetarily paid for this, I was paid in the form of getting this machine. And in the future, I might be doing more videos like this. It's not likely that most of my videos will be reviews of products that companies send me, but as the channel grows, more companies offer. And to be honest, I don't want to leave a lot of this on the table because I think that having more, slightly more honest reviews is helpful, even though I know that I cannot be 100% honest whenever I receive a product without paying for it. So long as they are not paying me and I have no interest, no personal interest in giving a positive review, I say that I'm okay with that. I'm not doing any affiliate links. There is a link to buy this in the description, but I get zero benefit from you doing this. The only reason that they have this specific link is so that they can track how many people went to their page because of my video, because they need to know for analytic reasons. But I am not getting any physical money from you buying this or not buying this or viewing this. It is all paid for because I got this machine for free to review. So I just wanted to let you know that because this is the first time I've made a video like this. And in the future, this will be a lot more brief. So anyway, on to the LX Maker LX Laser. So this is a laser engraving machine. It's essentially just a laser on a CNC gantry. Now, it is a kit. You do have to put it together. It was relatively easy to put together compared to the more complicated 3D printers that I've been used to building in the past. And I think it only took about four to six hours total. But there were a few oddities whenever I was building it. The T-nuts for threading in the M5 nuts and bolts that put this thing together. If you've ever used extruded 2020 aluminum, you are very familiar with these. The T-nuts are not drop-in, as in you have to slide it in from the end in order to attach them. In the directions that I was following, I was following the PDF directions off of the LX Makers website. Those directions did not include putting the T-nuts in beforehand. And there were times where I sort of put it all together and then, oh, I need to add a T-nut into something, but it's being blocked by something that I already attached. So instead of taking it all apart and slotting in the T-nuts that I needed, I used the drop-in T-nuts that I had from leftovers on my 3D printer builds. So that is a very important thing that I think LX Maker needs to include in their kits because drop-in T-nuts are very common nowadays and having ones that slide in honestly feels a bit archaic. All of the other parts went together well except for the laser module itself. I actually had to 3D print some shims in order to make it sit into its little mount that it has. It's a nice mount. I'd be able to attach other things in there eventually too, because it has nice and simple geometry. But the set screws that clamp it in from either side, the four of them, they aren't long enough to actually push against the laser module. So I had to add material to the laser module so that the screws had something to press on. Otherwise, it would have not mounted very well. So that's also another thing that I think needs to be addressed with this product. I have these 3D models uploaded. You can uh, download them, 3D print them yourself if you have this machine, but that's if you want to get it. Um, one of the other things that I added was on the motors, all of the stepper motors, I added what I call cable savers because originally they're very thin wires just going straight to the connectors, straight to the stepper motors. And I just find that after them moving for a while that they're going to break. So I added these little mounts that go on the side of the motor so that you can zip tie the cables to them and keep them safe. Those are also uploaded on Thingiverse. Okay, so one of the other things that I noticed with this as soon as I powered it up was the power supply. It is a very cheap power supply. It seems to work. It doesn't get too hot. It's just that it feels too light to power something like this. It's 12 volt. 
and it has a very terrible whine whenever there's no load, and that is a sign of a very cheap power supply. So watch out for that. If you're going to be using this long term, leaving it plugged in all the time, I highly recommend using a proper power supply. You could use a PC power supply that would work very well for something like this because it is, remember, only a two and a half watt laser. Let's talk about the actual machine now. It claims 380 by 300 millimeter travel and it is reasonably accurate. It has a very large travel area, which is nice to see from a machine like this without a Z axis. And the microcontroller that it uses is a Arduino Nano, it appears to be. It is a MANA SE controller and I'm not sure how standard it is, but I was able to find firmware for it. And that's another thing that I need to get into is the software for this. Now the software it came with and the software that is officially recommended by Alex Maker is not the best. It seems a bit patched together. It didn't seem to work well all the time. It seemed to focus more on aesthetics than actual functionality. There were a lot of settings that I really couldn't access. It wasn't behaving right. And with a machine like this that has a high powered laser on it, you don't want to be messing around with software and have it scrap a part that you're putting underneath it. So I decided to ditch the firmware that it had on there and I put on Laser GRBL or Laser Gerbil, I think is how some people pronounce it. It's sort of an open source CNC package and it also comes with firmware that works with the MANA SE. Um, I'm not going to go into the details on how to install it. It's pretty easy. You just have to go to the Laser Gerbil website and you'll be able to find that. That's also linked below. But from there, I was able to change the acceleration on the machine. Now, the acceleration on a laser engraver should be pretty high because if it has very low acceleration, the corners of the etches would appear darker than in the middle of the etch because it's slowing down and then speeding up. And the slower the laser goes, the more time it has to burn whatever's underneath it. So to get nice, consistent, and fast laser etches, you want to have high acceleration. And I could set that with this software. I went through and tuned all of the axes to have roughly maximum acceleration and travel speeds without glitches, and also set the steps per millimeter because that also is something that didn't come set out of the box. So those configuration files I do have in the description as well. This will help you get up and running if you have this machine. One of the other concerning things I noticed was that either the belts, the wheels, or both seem to be deteriorating pretty quickly. I'm not sure if it's just wearing in sort of from initial use, but after a while of running, I noticed that there's sort of black, random plasticky, rubbery flecks left around where the travel is. And I'm not sure if that's coming from the plastic roller wheels or from cheaper belts, but keep in mind that this machine may not run for as long as you think. Let's get on to what it can actually do now that it's set up, running, and working. I tested out a bunch of different materials for this and don't expect to use this like a professional CO2 laser. It's not that powerful. It can't do much. So I'll tell you what it can etch to begin with. So I tested it out. It can etch CDs, cardboard, wood, leather, black ABS plastic, painted metal, and painted acrylic. Now, there are a few other things that it can't etch. Obviously, it can't etch metal or glass, but it also can't etch clear plastics like acrylic. It might be able to if you left it on there for a very long time, but etching it just like at a regular speed, like even 100 millimeters per minute, it can't put an image into a clear material. And it also surprisingly can't etch, well, I used blue PLA from a 3D printer, but that might be in part due to the fact that the laser is a 405 nanometer blue laser. That's what it uses. It's a very similar technology. I assume it uses the same physics as a Blu-ray laser because they operate at the same wavelength. And because it's blue, it doesn't absorb very much energy and it just reflects it all. So that's another thing you're gonna to need to consider while using it. Now, you may have been noticing I've been focusing a lot about the negatives of this machine, and that's because, well, it's not the greatest machine out there. However, it is cheap. Most laser engravers out there that would be able to do, like, well, more useful things, they'd be upwards of $1,000 to $2,000 at least. Meanwhile, this one, I'm looking at the price now, is $195 from the Chinese warehouse. And I don't think you'd really be able to get it much cheaper than that without it 
not performing at all because the movements are relatively smooth. The laser does etch things and overall it seems to work as well as you'd expect. You won't be able to cut really anything, but I did find that you can cut painter's tape and make stencils out of it, which could also prove useful for art projects. And that's mainly what I find that this laser would be for. You won't really be able to make anything with it or build anything out of it, but if you want to like add a neat design to something or make a neat arts and crafts project, this could be very useful for that. So this is, I'd say, more of an arts and crafts device than a maker device. And if you had $200 to spend on a maker product, I would say I'd rather go for a cheaper 3D printer than for a laser engraver like this. The 3D printers are generally a lot more versatile. You can make more useful things out of them. This one, really, you can just burn designs into things. And at the end of the day, that's really all it does. So overall, I actually say that this machine is, well, for the money, about as good as you could expect. It's not going to be cutting everything like a CO2 laser. The mechanics of it do seem to be tuned well enough to do fine detailed wood burnings and other designs. Probably one of the biggest applications I could see for this actually is etching PC side panels. Remember how I said that it etches painted metal? What you can do with that, the area that it etches becomes more porous and you can actually fill that with paint, wipe it off, you get extraordinarily crisp line art whenever you have it laser etched in a vector mode. And I could see myself using that occasionally. That's my review of the LX Laser A3 Pro 2.5 watt laser engraving machine. If you have any questions about this machine or further clarifications, feel free to ask me in the comments and I should be able to update the description and also reply to your comment if you have any questions. So, thanks for watching.